Welcome back, and now we will con we will do the first mission for Sir Raleigh the Frog's boat. Hang a left. Oh, oh no. The first one you want to do is this one, because this is sort of the quintessential. A squid? Is that a squid? Oh my god, it's Great Cthulhu. Ah, die. Great Cthulhu kind of sucks. Yeah. Anyways, there are several different types of guards for each area. There's the flashlight guards, which are the most dangerous. They see you, they pull a gun. They and instantly shoot you, and it's virtually impossible to dodge them. And the, the their lights are where they can see you. There's also the ranged, the normal ranged guy, who's the star thrower. And then there's the, I mean the fruit thrower. The fruit thrower. And then you, you get the you get the extra life. Yeah. You need to master the art of talking and playing at the same time. Sorry. So, also in, in hub areas, there's often hidden stuff you can grab, like extra lives or horseshoes. Alright, just take the first mission already. So this is sort of the quintessential Sly Cooper level. It has a lot of sneaking and lasers. Lots of lasers. Lots and lots and lots of lasers. Alright, and lots of looting. I like how this guy is pitting of himself all over his house. Also, can I bring up the coin system? I did. I figured like it was essential to this game, but I liked it better in the second system because you actually use the coins to buy stuff. I wish I could get doors in the shape of skulls. Okay, once again, you, you hit the yellow ones, you get detected. You hit the red ones, you get freaking charbroiled. The cool thing about this game is the laser systems aren't really repetitive because there's all different types of lasers and they all do sort of different things and there's constantly new, you know, different stuff like this. Watch. Yeah, watch. These, these, hold up, go back. There's, there's another thing to smash on your left. Yeah, lots of coins. Lots of coins. Yeah, the thing is, these lasers will actually tr try to. Wait, blue bottle behind you. Right there, you go. There's more, more. There you go. Sorry, thank you. Yeah, these lasers will actually try to track you. And don't. Ta now is not a good time to be anal retentive. Just run up and shut the thing off. I'm Gamatron. My eyes shoot laser beams. And if you get that reference, you're officially awesome. I don't even get that reference. It's because you never played flat past Ratchet and Clank 2. Oh, you can break tiny vaults. Yeah, these are tiny vaults. They always hold up uh, two bottles. Two. Every time. Hold on, let me just go back and make sure I've got everything. So yeah, sometimes the safe isn't at the end of the level. Which is kind of annoying. But you need more clothes. Yeah, dude. Don't you know? You need more clues. Cha. The one thing I do love about this level is how much stuff you can break. It's good if you ever need to get your anxieties out. And also to build up. If, you, if you've if you lost a lot of lives, which is not likely, which, yeah, which is definitely not likely, um, it's really helpful to go to this level because you can just break stuff and get a whole bunch of coins. Yeah, like that. You get, the thing is, you get 100 coins into a lucky charm. If you're already full on lucky charms, then you get an extra life. Anyway, you play this game for a while, and eventually you really get used to the gameplay style, and, be, and you just become awesome. Yeah, this game is very fluid, and very good at having a learning curve where it isn't... Like, the learning curve is very good, and that it doesn't get really difficult. Oh, I forgot about the belly floppers. These guys always cheap shot me. I, I always just run away from them. Wave your stick at them! Oh, good. Yeah. Time lasers. No you, trespassing. You can break those too. Yeah, you can break anything in this game, pretty much. Hooray for destruct. Honestly, screw Battlefield 3. This game has the real destructive physics. 
the, yeah, especially the Karma Lita levels. Like, she blows up f everything. I forgot you actually get to play as her in this game, or is it the, what's it the third one? That's the third one. Yeah, you don't get to play as anyone else in life for this game very much. Yeah, that was one thing that people uh, complained about in the first one, which is you would just Sly. That's why I love the second one. You can play as Sly, Murray, or Bentley, and they all have their own moves. And they're all sort of unique characters. Like, um, I love, I would just love playing as Murray because one, they made him less annoying in the second game, and two, because he, in the second game, they sort of modified his storyline so he kicks ass now. Instead of just being the van driver, they made him the brawn. Like, he punt, his attack strength is through the roof. I just love walking up to dudes and just freaking pounding on them, like, yeah, you want some sucker? Anyway, something to note, Sly can't swim at all. I don't know why he's a raccoon. They go into the streams and stuff to eat crawfish all the time. Uh, I'm gonna... My guess would be that uh, maybe it's the 12-ton golden horseshoe he's carrying on his back. That might be weighing him down. Also, Sly has the funniest death animation when he drowns. He takes his hat off and puts it over his heart like he's a sailor. Either that or he just shrugs. Well, that's actually when he falls. Yeah, when he falls, he just like, he floats there for a second, cartoon style, and just goes, Oh well! Ah! Splat. Alright, this should be the last clue bottle. Hooray! We don't have to montage this level. Anyways, let me just, I'll be right back. I'm gonna head over and open up the safe and see what we get. Yeah, I forgot we have the knockout dive. Yeah. That's useful if you don't want to get too close to someone before whacking them. Really? Did she get away very fast? She was also voted most ridiculous looking raccoon when doing it. This is actually pretty useful sometimes. Wee! Because <laughs> not only does it let you move a lot faster when you need to, but also later in the game, it becomes electric powered. <laughs> I love I love the logic in this freaking game. It's a cartoon. I know, I'm just not, I will keep making jokes about the logic because it's kind of my job. Let me guess it. That's, that's the thing, this walkthrough would be freaking boring if we were just playing through it. See, the thing about games is you, you have to have some suspension of disbelief. Just don't leave your brain completely unusable. Like, follow the rules that are established within the universe. You know, if you establish the rules, you can basically do anything you want as long as you follow those rules. It's when you break the rules of the universe, when it gets stupid. Go, counter. Oh wait, we're not doing comedically large key, we're doing comedically large lock. Comedically large key, fine. Okay, and that's the first real level in the game. We'll catch you next time.